Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Drew here from Lone Fox, and today we are diving back into something that I used to talk about rather often. And I still do talk about it every now and then, but as many of you know, I bought a house last year. I can't believe it's been a year now. And so since then, we've been doing a lot of like house projects where they're not exactly rental friendly. I'm able to customize a lot of things in my home. However, before this house and what I kind of built my channel and Lone Fox off of was rental friendly makeovers and different upgrades and tips that you can do to your spaces to make them feel more customized and not like an actual rental. And today I thought it would be fun because I've kind of gone over those one by one in different videos. In today's video, I wanted to compile all of my top favorite and also some of my least favorite rental friendly upgrades that you can add. So these are things that are Lone Fox approved per se and things I definitely would consider splurging on if I was renting. And I will have a link below to my Amazon storefront, which actually has so many of the rental friendly options I've purchased in the past and things that I just have loved. I curated a bunch of my favorites in one easy link. So I'll add that to the description box for you guys. So yes, but it actually feels so good to be back filming. I have been traveling so much. I don't know if you guys follow me over on Instagram, but I went to Sweden, then I went to New York, went home for a few days, and then back to New York, and I have just been traveling so much this past month, which actually is not something I usually do, because as many of you know, I've talked about on the channel in the past, that I struggle with anxiety, and it really heightens around travel. I have such bad travel anxiety when it comes to insomnia and sleep and such, and today's video is actually kindly sponsored by BetterHelp, which I've worked with them in the past on videos, because BetterHelp was a huge facet of my life for about a year and a half. Actually, it's better help for a little over a year during a specific period when my anxiety was so, so bad that I really couldn't even go out and talk to a therapist. Like I didn't even want to kind of be in that environment, if that makes sense. Sometimes when you're in that moment, it's so much easier to get on your phone and download an app like BetterHelp and use a platform like that to then interact or talk to a therapist. And the great thing about BetterHelp is they actually pair you up with a therapist in as little as a few days of you signing up and answering some questions, which is amazing because I've gone through times where I just need a therapist now and I've called a hundred places and not even one is open for months and that just really isn't something I feel like you can do if you do struggle with mental health. Their mission really is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable to people all around because sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint down a therapist in your area whether you live in a remote area or you live in an area where therapists are just booked out for a long period of time. Better help is there for you when you actually need it. Even if you don't have something clinically diagnosed like anxiety or depression, Depression. Sometimes life just also gets in the way and talking to somebody and letting out your thoughts and hearing someone else's perspective can be nice every now and then. So if you would like to try out BetterHelp, make sure to do so. You can actually go to my link. It is betterhelp.com slash lonefox, which I'll put at the top of the description box below. And I want to thank BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video, but we got to dive on in to some of these rental friendly upgrades that I personally love. Some of them I don't like. I'm going to pinpoint which ones. I've gone through trial and error with a lot. So let's jump into our first. The first one we're diving into is one that I feel like everyone is aware of, and that is peel and stick wallpaper. And peel and stick wallpaper can be kind of a touchy subject because some people feel like peel and stick wallpaper is removable, some people feel like it is not removable, and it's definitely kind of a case by case basis. I feel like you're going to need to look at reviews for peel and stick wallpaper to see if anyone's removed it, um, or try to do a little bit of research online for that specific brand to make sure. Because, for example, in my last apartment, not this last one that I was in but the one before that we did a peel and stick wallpaper from society six and it was on the kind of accent wall for probably around a little over a year and when we went to remove it it totally removed so seamlessly and so easy but there definitely have been times where I've applied peel and stick wallpaper in bathrooms or in areas that get more condensation where the peel and stick wallpaper kind of does start to adhere a little bit more to the walls and when it comes time to remove it you can get some paint that actually pulls off of the wall and in return you're gonna have to kind of sand that area fill in any gaps or holes and then repaint over which isn't the most rental friendly option and I have to say too if you are choosing between peel and stick wallpaper and real wallpaper for your house or your rental if you're renting it out whatever it may be I always suggest going with real wallpaper because peel and stick wallpaper I find it's such a challenge to actually put up nicely and properly because it sticks to everything as you're holding it up it's a bit challenging sometimes to align up the lines as well 
However, with the real wallpaper, you do have to apply wallpaper glue to it, but it's really easy to shift around. It sticks to the wall. It's not super tacky, so you kind of have a little more leeway with it, if that makes sense. But Peel and Stick, again, is a great alternative for rentals. So I definitely would say that it is Lone Fox approved. I'd also say you might want to go to the edge of your wall, whether it's the top by the crown molding or the bottom by the baseboard, and see if you're able to even peel a little of the paint away from the wall, because that's kind of a sign before applying the wallpaper that your paint might have not been applied properly, the walls might not have been primed properly, and the results are going to be pulled off paint when you peel off that peel and stick wallpaper. The next peel and stick I want to talk about is peel and stick floor tile. And I have to say this is probably my favorite out of all the peel and stick products you can use just because it really does give you the biggest transformation and it's something that covers up a floor. And I feel like there isn't a bunch of options always to cover up the floor. You can't really paint it like you can a wall. You can put a rug over it, but it's not as easy to demo a floor and redo it than to put peel and stick tile over the top of it. And I actually really love the way a lot of the peel and stick tiles look. And in my previous previous apartments and in some past spaces as well, even in my parents' old house, we did so many different peel and stick floor options and they've always withstood the test of time. Like I had them in the space the entire time, even at the apartment previous, the owner wanted to keep them in there because he said it looked so much better than the previous tile and it was going strong. So we did like a graphic one down at the bottom of the stairwell. And then in my bathroom, there was this really pretty star pattern that I loved so much. And it was like a soft pastel colorway. And I also know that Chris Loves Julia just came out with one with wall pops that's kind of that harlequin marble pattern with the dark gray and the light marble which is so pretty i've been wanting to kind of do something like that and i think mckenna actually just used that in her bathroom makeover as well but i've always loved that peel and stick tile i think it's such a beautiful rendition of it so as you probably can tell peel and stick tile is definitely 100 percent lone fox approved if i had floor in a rental that i didn't love whether it be like some old vinyl flooring or just tile that's just outdated i totally swap it out for for some peel and stick tile. Now, when you go to leave, I will say if you were to pull it up, a lot of times there is gonna be a little bit of residue, but it's pretty easy to scrape off with some goo gone or like some goof off if you have that. It's not anything that's going to ruin the floors, but it's also not going to be something that you just peel up and it's super clean in the end. The last peel and stick we're talking about is backsplash tile. And backsplash tile is one that can be kind of a hit or a miss for me, and it's more so based off of what the material you're applying it to, because almost all backsplash tiles really aren't sold as a peel and stick backsplash tile. It's more so something that you can put over the top of a backsplash and leave it. Um, at least everyone I've used, the adhesive on the backsides are super strong. So if your backsplash is really glossy, kind of like a tile that's super shiny, really easy to clean down and wipe. I would say putting a peel and stick backsplash over the top of that if it wasn't your favorite is totally a plus and it is Lone Fox approved. However, you should never put peel and stick tile for a backsplash over the top of direct wall, whether it be like painted wall or just a backsplash is a wall itself or over the top of a more kind of coarse tile. So if you could imagine it's not polished, it kind of has more of a dusty finish to it, something like a natural stone, you wouldn't want to put a peel and stick backsplash on because it's not going to be easy to to remove and it's probably going to damage the surface of the stone when you do go to remove it. Now I've wrapped so many countertops with contact paper. I did that for years on my channel, many different bathrooms, all the way back to like my first bathroom I ever did a makeover on, which was in my apartment in downtown Los Angeles. I did wrapped countertops. And in that apartment, I will say, those countertops were neon orange. So they needed to be wrapped because they were bright. However, if you can withstand your current countertops, I would definitely say contact papering, a high traffic surface is not Lone Fox approved. In my last apartment, not the one in downtown, I contact papered those countertops and they were kind of just a gray basic kind of plastic countertop and I contact papered them and I will tell you guys, it was such a struggle getting that contact paper on them and second of all, it really is not the easiest to clean. The edges pop up if you're wrapping it around thin little areas. It's not easy to keep those edges tacked down if it's like the edge of a countertop. It looks a lot easier on video and also I will say it is not the easiest to smooth the air bubbles out of contact 
paper unless your countertops are super smooth and you have them extremely cleaned down before, especially cutting out the hole for the sink, cutting around hardware. It's quite the challenge. So I wouldn't necessarily go for a peel and stick contact paper. I wouldn't really say it's Sloan Fox approved. However, if you are doing contact paper on like a DIY furniture piece or on like a small little side table, I would say totally go for it. You know, a small project that isn't high traffic, I think is great to alter with some contact paper. However, countertops in your bathroom or kitchen countertops, I wouldn't wrap them in a contact paper. Most times you can tell it's been wrapped, honestly, and it really just doesn't withstand the test of time. And one of my favorite rental friendly solutions for hanging things up, which this is already Lone Fox approved, is command hooks. Now, I love using command hooks. There's a specific one that I personally like the most. I'm gonna pop them up here, the ones that have the wire hook on them. I feel like they have never done me wrong. There are, however, some, like the larger ones that you get that are like the really big ones with the uh, large backing on them that I feel like can damage your wall. So you definitely wanna be careful. I wouldn't say put something extremely heavy on a command hook because anything that could be easily ripped off is gonna pull the paint off with it. If you're watching this video and you're gonna implement some of these tips and you freshly painted a space, do not put command hooks on a freshly painted wall for literally up to like a month to six weeks, I'd say, until the paint really has fully cured on that wall because if you put it on after a week it really is going to peel it right off like the paint hasn't fully cured down yet even though it's dry it hasn't cured so just look at the cure time on the paint that you're actually working with or search it online a lot of times it will let you know like this product needs 30 days to cure down and that's when you should go in with your command hooks but otherwise use like a small little finishing nail or a small picture nail for the time being and just fill it in when you leave one of the most focal points of any room is always the light fixture. And a lot of times they're in the center of the room, they're hanging from the ceiling, whether it be a pendant light, even a flush mount. And with rentals, I always suggest swapping out the lighting because adding a custom fixture, custom as in you added it and it wasn't like already there, I always feel like it gives such an elevated and personalized touch to the space. And you really can find so many incredible fixtures on Facebook Marketplace. I will have some of my favorites also linked in my Amazon shop below for you guys because I've used so many many on the channel over the years and I always suggest that if you are a renter just to store that current light fixture that's hanging there underneath your bed or in the back of a closet or in the top of a closet until it comes time to move out. If you really don't want to change those light fixtures and you don't care about them anymore if they're like a little Amazon purchase ask your landlord you know I swapped these out um I could put back the other ones, no worries at all. It'll look exactly how it did. Or you can keep them if you'd like to, because that's what I did with my previous two apartments. And they of course wanted to keep all the light fixtures in them. And for me, it was easier than taking them out. I knew I wanted to change up the look of those light fixtures. I had them for years. So that was the easiest option for myself. Now, hardware can make a humongous impact in your kitchen. And a lot of times when you're moving into a rental space, they don't use the cutest hardware. It is the cheap hardware from Amazon or the affordable option from Lowe's. And sometimes you wanna add your own hardware, whether it be some cute anthropology knobs or something else you found on Amazon. I actually have an entire folder of hardware on my Amazon storefront, so check that out. And I think swapping hardware is such an easy and great thing. Now, I would never drill additional holes into cabinetry, so I wouldn't consider doing that but if you can easily find the same exact size of handle or you can find like a singular knob that would fit that hole I think swapping hardware is a hundred percent Lone Fox approved as a rental upgrade because you can take it with you when you leave and you can just keep the current hardware in like a little bag and put it in the back of one of the kitchen drawers until it's time to actually leave and just swap it out quickly and I always feel like custom hardware can elevate a space so much and even in my previous apartment's bathroom there were just some brushed nickel little like chintzy knobs on on the vanities and I swapped them out for some really pretty rattan ones that I had gotten and I just loved whether that looked. It really made the vanity feel custom and a little bit more special than those brushed nickel ones that just came with the vanity. A lot of times when you move into a rental, there's not a designer that has gone through and hung the curtains all the way up to the ceiling before you moved in, which normally does look quite good. And I keep referencing my previous one because it was a rental, but in that apartment, we had the smallest little white metal rod mounted directly above the window with these sheer curtains that hit right under the window. They didn't even go to the floor. It was a very, very bad look. And I totally think that curtains are an upgrade that you can do to a space. And it's also really not the biggest 
thing if you had to patch and repair those holes. It's just two holes on either side of the bar or the bracket. Just patch them, paint them, and you're good. However, having the curtains installed, of course, floor to ceiling will elevate the walls, make it feel a lot nicer. It also might help you personally if you want blackout curtains or having like the space really dark at night. So totally something to consider, but I definitely would say they are Lone Fox approved. And my last little hack I want to share with you is my electrical tape on the windows. And this is another one that could lean either way. You should either do it or you should not do it. And when you should do it is if you live in a climate that doesn't get super, super hot, because I actually did this at my parents' house in Arizona. And the weather there is like always 100 degrees and it actually melted off of their window. So if you do live in a cooler climate, this is something that can totally elevate the look of your windows. Um, I actually just use black electrical tape to tape grid patterns off on the windows whether it be a sliding glass door a bathroom window anything that you want to give the look of custom painting to it's a great quick and easy way to do that extremely rental friendly because when you leave you can just pull that right off the window uh, so something to consider just adding some designs to your window with some electrical tape can be a great way to make it look like it actually has some sort of iron work on it or gives it more of an interesting kind of detail so those guys were all of the lone fox approved and not so much approved now there are really a lot that are approved because most peel and stick products and rental friendly kind of update products really do work well and I've used them on the channel in the past so I have touched and installed and done every single one of these that I've shared in this video. I've done them by hand. So these really are my true honest kind of thoughts and ideas on each of these products and where you should use them, where you shouldn't use them. And of course, I want to give a big shout out to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. Again, I will link it at the top of the description box below. I know actually I found BetterHelp when I first started out through another YouTuber's video, just exactly like this. And it was a platform that I used for so long. So um, definitely something you might want to look into. Thank you all again so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every single week on home decor and DIY. And I will catch you all in the next one.